Welcome to this short lecture on arterial blood gases or ABGs. This particular lecture will firstly will revise how we regulate our pH, then we'll look at, at some examples of what would cause your pH to go out of balance, and then we'll look at when you get an arterial blood gas within your clinical notes, how to read it, understand it, and make sense of what's happening. So let's have a look on the board firstly. So there's a few things going on here. Firstly, we've got an equation, which is your bicarbonate buffering system equation. If you're not familiar with this, I, I, rec I suggest you go and have a look at Mike's video, who has done a number of videos on this. But we will go back to it very briefly to show how it fits in with regulating your pH and your arterial blood gases. Over here, we've got some... Um, states that you could be in, so respiratory acidosis, alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and alkalosis. So we'll talk about them, what would cause these states to occur and how it impacts this equation. Well, here are your normal values of how your blood gases should normally look. And we'll give, basically we'll go through some examples of an arterial blood gas and have an approach, a four step approach of how when you get your blood gases, how you should approach it to make sense of it. So let's firstly just revise very quickly the, the bicarbonate buffering system. This is essentially a system to regulate your hydrogen ions in your body, which is essentially your pH. Your pH or the power of hydrogen is the amount of hydrogen ions in your blood. And this is a range of 7.35 to 7.45. So this is an equation that essentially demonstrates how we in the, our body regulates through homeostasis the, the um, hydrogen levels. So firstly, let's start at this end. We've got carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide is basically made by every single cell in your body. It's, it's made by the use of glucose and oxygen to make ATP, and as a byproduct, we make CO2. CO2 then quickly meets up with water. So about 70% of your carbon dioxide will form with water to give you this thing called carbonic acid. Now this will go into your blood and then it will get transported to your lungs here where it will get breathed out. So carbon dioxide, although it can be made in every cell in your body, it can only be exhaled or lost or excreted by your lungs. So essentially anything to do with carbon dioxide levels is a respiratory thing. So carbon dioxide should be in a range, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your arterial blood should be in the range of 35 to 45 millimetres of mercury. It's an easy way to remember this is look at your pH. If you get rid of the sevens, if you get rid of both sevens, it will give you 35, 45, which is essentially your partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So any state where carbon dioxide is out of range with your blood gases, it's a respiratory cause because your lungs is regulating your carbon dioxide levels. So it should be in that range. If you've got high carbon dioxide, which would be above the 45, because carbon dioxide in your blood with water is an acid, it would actually make the pH to go down. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. Going to this end, so with this carbonic acid, which you can see is made by carbon dioxide and water, another reversible way you could look at it is down in your body end, particularly your kidney end, it can reversibly dissociate into hydrogen, which we know, is an acid and bicarbonate which we know is a base. Now hydrogen can be made in the body or ingested in the body so this can be moved around quite a bit as can bicarbonate but bicarbonate is only regulated by the kidney so the kidney is the only organ in the body that can really play around with bicarbonate levels so for that reason um, we call the bicarbonate levels a metabolic okay because the kidney is essentially regulating the bicarbonate levels. So what's happening with the acid will determine what the kidney is doing with it. So if you're in a state where you've produced more hydrogen, so you've ingested things that are acid-like, or you're in states, so you are producing acid, like if you're producing ketones or lactic acid, that would make more of this. That would mean your kidney has to make more of this to try and buffer this out so your pH doesn't go out of whack. So it's important to note if your bicarbonate levels are out of whack, that would mean it, it's a kidney thing, which means it's a metabolic thing. So wherever you see the bicarbonate levels, 
which should be in a range of 22 to 26 millimoles of mercury, sorry, millimoles per litre. Anything too high, so it's above 26, would mean there's excessive base, so you would be in an alkalotic or alkalosis state, whereas if you have low bicarbonate, so it's less than 22, that would suggest that either you've got a lot of acid and your base is trying to buffer it, or you've just lost a lot of base, like for instance with diarrhea. So hopefully you can see now that the carbon dioxide is regulated by the lungs, the bicarbonate is regulated by the kidneys, which would equate to a metabolic, okay? And the purpose of this is just to keep your pH in a normal range, okay? The other thing that I've got here is just the partial pressure of oxygen which is 75 to 100 millimetres of mercury. And this is just an, another important aspect to an ABG, particularly with the, resp the respiratory aspect to it. So, here are some examples that we'll go through now to make sense of how an ABG is um, read. So, the way that it's sometimes written in the clinical notes is a number slash number slash number slash number so the first number is your ph the second is the carbon dioxide the third is the oxygen and the fourth is the bicarbonate so if you see this you need to understand what it means and this is the approach so step one you look at the ph so you look at this number so the ph as we know should be 7.35 to 7.45 that's the first step the second step is to look at the carbon dioxide levels. It should be 35 to 45. So that's the second number. Okay, that's the second step. Third step is the bicarbonate. So you actually look at this number. That should be 22 to 26 millimoles per litre. And then finally, we have this acronym known as Rome, just like the city in Italy. And the RO, okay, the RO stands for respiratory opposite. ME metabolic equal. Now what that means is, um, with, if it's a respiratory caused issue, the number between here and here will go the opposite direction. So if the pH goes down, the, if it's a respiratory problem, the CO2 will go up. That's why it's called respiratory opposite. Whereas if it's a metabolic issue, if the pH goes down, the bicarbonate will go down, which is why it's metabolic equal. So, if you're still not sure, let's do an example and we'll make sense. So let's start with example one, 7.29, pH should be 7.35 to 7.45. So we know that this is down, arrow down. Having a look at now the CO2, it's 35 to 45, we know that is up, so it's an arrow up. The 60 is actually low, so I'll just put a cross here. And then finally, the bicarbonate is 28, which means it's high. So now going to the Rome, we know that, so we've got two arrows going up. The carbon dioxide's up, the bicarbonate up, the pH is down. So which one's the opposite? Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So that means it has to be a respiratory issue. And we've got, so what do we got here? We've got high CO2. So this CO2 levels are high, okay, pH is low. And we know that if you have high CO2, it adds with the water, which then might bicarbonate acid, but uh, carbonic acid, which then would equate to a high amount of hydrogen. And this is why this particular person has got a low pH, because we know as the hydrogen goes up, the pH goes down. So this person would be in respiratory acidosis, which is this one here. Now, why is the bicarbonate high, this one here? Well, we know that the hydrogen's high, hence why the pH is low, but the kidney is trying to, to compensate, so it's making more bicarbonate. So this is why this is high. It's trying to make more of this to buffer this to drop the pH, but it hasn't done it well enough So because the pH is still out of whack. So we say it is in this case, partially compensated. So this would be this 
If you saw this in your notes, it would be considered partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Now, what are some of the reasons why a person may have respiratory acidosis? A big one is they are hypo, they've got hypoventilation. Hypoventilation. That means they aren't getting rid of enough CO2. Some causes of hypoventilation would be maybe some drugs, sedatives or opiates can change your respiratory drive, making it slower than it should, therefore you're not getting rid of your CO2. Okay. Other things that might cause it are intrinsic lung issues. So if you have things like pneumonia, which changes the gas exchange, or pulmonary edema, which would also change that, or if you have poor flowing, so you have trapping, which could be obstructive issues like COPD or asthma. All these things could cause CO2 to increase, which ultimately would cause hydrogen to increase. And if your kidneys can't buffer it, you would end up with an acidosis, which we've seen, but in this case, it's partially compensated. The kidney's trying to do it. So that's the first one done. Let's move to the next one. We've got 7.3, so 7.5, so that's going to be high, so arrow up. 41, this is normal, so I'll just put a tick. A tick, so that's normal. 98 is normal, and 29 is high. So we've got two arrows going up, normal, normal. So if it was respiratory, it would be opposite, like we saw there, but it's gone the same direction, so it's equal, so we know it's metabolic. So we know it is metabolic because it's in the same direction. Okay. Now, is it an acid or a base? Well, at 7.5, it's above 4.5, so we know it is an alkalosis. Alkalosis. Now, the so this is this is essentially meaning there's a lot of this relative to this, okay? Which could mean, so we're focusing on metabolic alkalosis here. So what are some reasons for maybe why you have high, high amounts of bicarbonate to um, hydrogen? Well, maybe, maybe you've just lost your hydrogen. So ways you could lose your hydrogen is lots of vomiting. So if your patient's vomiting a lot, they're going to lose a lot of HCl, which is the hydrogen. If you're losing lots of hydrogen, therefore you've got a lot more base compared to the acid. That means you'd have the alkalosis. Other things that could cause it if a person's taken lots of antacid, okay, for um, problems with their stomach like um, reflux or um, ulcers. Or they might be, um, try to think of another example. If you've maybe suctioned their stomach and pulling out acid, that could be also a cause. Now, We've, we know it's a metabolic alkalosis. What should happen if that is um, excessive? You would expect to see the carbon dioxide trying to compensate, but it's still in the 41 range, which means it is not compensating. So the lungs aren't compensating for this alkalosis, so it is uncompensated. Okay, so this would be an uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. And we said some of the causes for metabolic alkalosis would be vomiting, um, antacid use, or maybe um, stomach suction in. So that's the second one done. Okay, let's move on to this one. So we've got 7.49. Okay, so that's again high. Okay, 24, that should be 35 at the lower margin, so that's low. 105, so that's actually high, but it's good. And 22, which is okay. So we know the person's got alkalosis. The CO2 is going down, the other two are normal. So it's opposite, respiratory opposite. So we know it's a respiratory cause. So we now know it's respiratory alkalosis because the, the pH is actually high. Now the bicarbonate is in normal range, which means it's not buffering. So again, so it's not trying to buff, it's not buffering. So that would mean it's uncompensated. Now, 
what essentially is happening here because the CO2 is low that means you're getting rid of lots of CO2 okay and because you're getting rid of a lot of CO2 you have less to make with water less acid okay so less of this but you would expect the kidney to try and counter this by getting rid of bicarbonate in the urine but it hasn't done so because it's still in the normal range so what would cause a respiratory alkalosis? Well, it's basically the opposite of the respiratory acidosis. So it would be not hypoventilation, but hyper. Hyperventilation. So what would cause your patients to hyperventilate? Well, they could be in pain or they could um, be anxious, having a panic attack. That would cause too much to get released. Another thing would be if you go to altitude, you um, have less oxygen partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere is less. That means you've got to breathe more to keep your blood oxygenated. That means as you're breathing more, you're blowing more CO2 off. And that could also cause you to get respiratory alkalosis. Or if you've got problems with your heart, like heart failure, that could also lead to not enough CO2 getting blown off. But you would expect, because you've got less with water to make carbonic acid, you'd expect the um, this to essentially compensate by urinating out the excessive amounts of bicarbonate but at this point in time the kidney is not doing so remember the kidneys does takes hours to do this and this is probably why it's a bit slower finally the last one is 7.38 so this is normal so that's a tick 30 that's low so that's actually a low 93 that's good and 15 is very low so this is down so this seems a bit odd because what we've got here is we've got low CO2, low CO2, which would actually make you alkalotic, whereas you've got low bicarbonate, so low bicarbonate, which suggests you've got a lot of acid there for some reason, which has buffered a lot of the bicarbonate, which is it's low because that's there's less free amounts of bicarbonate because it's presumably buffering lots of hydrogen. So what this one would be, even though the pH is normal, but because the bicarbonate is much more out of whack than the um, CO2, we would say it is a metabolic acidosis. So it's metabolic acidosis. But because the pH is in a good range, it's a normal range, it's fully compensated. which means we've got lots of acid, we've lost a lot of base to buffer it, that's why it's 15, which would suggest there's still lots of acid, which means it's going to be more of this, which means that the carbon dioxide will try to get rid of that by blowing more of this off, or more of it out here, which would actually make the CO2 levels drop, which we did see. So that's a good thing, which means the pH is in a normal range. So even though we've got an acid forming condition, high amounts of hydrogen, it's compensated. The lung has compensated, which it will probably do because your lungs work within minutes, seconds to minutes to, to try and compensate. So this is why we've got a metabolic acidosis, fully compensated. Now, what are, the, what are some of the reasons for a person to get metabolic acidosis? These are states that would cause lots of this to be produced or if you ingest acid-like things or you lose lots of that. So metabolic acidosis, for example, if you are producing lactic acid, so you could get that if a person is going into shock because their tissues aren't being perfused, therefore they haven't got oxygen, therefore they go into an anaerobic state, therefore they produce lactic acid, therefore they got more hydrogen ions, therefore they'll probably lose the bicarbonate. Another one would be ketogenesis, ketones, ketogenesis. So a person with diabetes ketoacidosis would get these. And if you have lots of hydrogen or ketones, that means you're going to lose your bicarbonate. And what would you expect to see with these two? Particularly with DKA, their respiratory rate increases to get rid of the CO2. Another thing that you might have is diarrhea. So diarrhea 
because bicarbonate is produced by the pancreas to buffer the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, it would also hope to be reabsorbed in your intestine, that if you've got diarrhea, you're pooing out lots and lots of bicarbonate, and that would also lose that more, more hydrogen ions freely, therefore a me metabolic acidosis. In terms of ingestion, finally, just alcohol or aspirin are actually um, acid-forming metabolites, which if you ingest lots of alcohol or aspirin, that could also put you into a metabolic acidotic state. So hopefully now what you've seen is how the bicarbonate system will regulate your pH. Your kidneys do it with over essentially days. Your lungs can do it within minutes with CO2. Your, your kidneys do it with bicarbonate. Hopefully you can see how you should approach an ABG and some examples of when they do work, we know that it's fully compensated. When they try to work, it's partially compensated. And if they've made no attempt, it is um, uncompensated. And then finally, hopefully you can see conditions or processes that would lead to a pH being out of range. And that would hopefully get you to think clinically. So when you are looking after your patients and you've taken the ABG, you know is what exactly is happening.